gentlewoman is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I rise to offer an amendment that will continue to ensure that the Department of Housing and Urban Development's multifamily staff remains locally based, connected to communities and on the ground to serve as the eyes and ears of lawmakers. Specifically, this amendment will prohibit HUD from using any of the funds appropriated by this bill for the Multifamily Housing Transformation Initiative, which is designed to relocate asset management staff and restructure HUD's multifamily field offices nationwide. Mr. Speaker, this amendment would effectively stop HUD from closing any of the offices where asset management staff are currently located. When HUD announced its plans for a major restructuring of multifamily field offices nationwide, I was deeply concerned. Under the plan, HUD will go from 50 multifamily offices down to 12, with only five of them being designated as region regional centers. The shortcomings of this plan are not more obvious than in my home district, where a decision was made to relocate the Los Angeles field office, one of the busiest hubs in the country. If undeterred, this plan would close the Los Angeles office, uproot its entire staff, and relocate its operations to another regional center, which would now be responsible for more than double its current workload and facing the daunting task of serving 73 million people in 14 states across 1.8 million square miles. HUD promises that this plan will achieve significant savings without impacting program delivery. However, after careful review, I remain skeptical that HUD will be able to deliver on this promise. I join advocates, industry stakeholders, and affected employees in expressing my continued serious concern over the implications of this reorganization, and my concerns are numerous. First, HUD's plan does not seem to acknowledge the critical importance and value of having staff who are living and working in the communities they are serving. There are significant differences among local housing markets, and an awareness of each region's unique characteristics is essential to the work of the multifamily housing office. Second, reorganization would adversely affect delivery of services by reducing staff's ability to effectively respond to unique local concerns and remain connected to community leaders. Staff would have less interaction with owners and managers and responsive walk-in assistance would be eliminated for thousands of people that rely on multifamily offices. California is one of the hardest hit states by the financial collapse and too many families suffered from the subsequent wave of foreclosures. With our housing market still struggling to recover, we cannot afford to undercut what little progress we have made with a radical overhaul of HUD's infrastructure. I, for one, am still struggling to understand how this plan will save money while also preserving the quality of services delivered. And I have yet to receive satisfactory answers from HUD regarding my concerns. That is why I've been and I remain a vocal opponent of HUD's multifamily transformation in its entirety. And today, I'm urging HUD to more carefully consider the details and full implications of its plan. Although this amendment only addresses some of my concerns and would not stop the transformation altogether, it would codify the agreement between HUD and appropriators to keep asset management staff on site and leave all existing multifamily offices open. Moreover, it reflects language that just passed the Senate last week. For these reasons, I urge my colleagues on both sides of the aisle to vote aye on this amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time.